Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Ouellette and Casey Berman. Hi, everyone. Casey Berman and Adam Ouellette here at the Love or Leave the Law podcast. So happy to have you back. We are jumping into part four of the seven keys of how to fall back in love with the law. As you know, we talk about if you'd like how to leave the law. We also talk about how to refresh and love your practice again if you've hit a rough spot or just aren't feeling in alignment with it. And that's what we're focusing on today. We've done uh, keys one through three already. Please check us on iTunes. Check us out on YouTube. And now we're going to focus on key number four, which Adam is going to take us through, which is around meditating and being present. And I know that sounds touchy-feely, but it, you, you can think of it as being in the zone, being in, in alignment, however you want to phrase it. And really what we're going to dive into today, and I'm very excited about this because this is a practice I have just started, is why meditation, and particularly why meditation for attorneys. And then once we get a comfort level around that, how to meditate, how to go about doing this so we don't feel weird, so it doesn't take up too much time, and it's something that really fits into our busy schedule and adds to us. So Adam, thank you so much. Great to see you again. Hey, yeah, you good to be here. Glad to be partnered up with you on this, Casey. All right, as I am always. I love doing these podcasts. It's, it's our unique genius. You and I just have right. so much fun with it. And I've been looking forward to this episode for a lot because you and I have talked a lot in the podcast. We've talked a lot outside when you and I just were on phone calls about how to be present, about how to meditate. And I guess based on what we just said, why? Why meditate? Why breathe deeply? Why should we do this? There are a lot of reasons, Casey. And one of the things that I found when I first started meditating was I needed to do it. Uh, I was yeah. about three, four years into practicing law. I absolutely hated it. I regretted my decision going to law school. I was saddled with a lot of law school debt, uh, yeah. not as much as some of the people coming out nowadays. I mean, some of the folks I talked to 250,000 and it just blows my mind. It just blows yeah. my mind. But here I am, uh, you know, 27, 28 years old and I just can't stand being a lawyer. And I, I was kicking myself all the time and, and putting myself through a lot of stress. And so what happened was the stress of being a lawyer and the stress of resisting being a lawyer and then being in the law uh, caused me to be tired, get sick, yeah. uh, go into the hospital with migraine headaches. And I, I knew something had to give. Some had to give, Casey. I mean, yeah. and so um, I was starting to read books about meditation. I had heard about meditation. And, and back in the day, I really wasn't very touchy-feely. Um, yeah. You know, here I am, this 6'9 guy who's almost three, well, 300 and something pounds at the time. And you wouldn't take me for touchy feely meditator, you know, <laughs> and a lot of people don't, they meet me and I say, uh, do you meditate? And no. And they look at me going, oh, you, you know, you got shaved head and you've got this goatee. You don't look like you're sitting in a uh, lotus let me jump position. In for a sec. Everyone, Adam six, nine, uh, big guy played college basketball, a bruiser down under bumping and, and pushing people out of the way. And I, and I say that in a joke, but also to really give people an idea of, of kind of the transformation that you have made, you know, internally and not really yeah. dealing with like how people perceive you, but it, right. it's, been a, it's been a huge transformation for you. It has. And then over the last 15 years, once I started meditating, um, I started to embrace different ideas and meditation was something yeah. that was very difficult for me and is difficult for a lot of people. That's why some people try it and then they never do it. They yeah. never do it on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis because we're not taught how to do this. Our lives, our society, our communities are not built on quieting our mind and getting into a space where we just, we do our best to shut our thoughts off. And right. so as I'm finding some books on meditation, then clearly I, I'm going to find someone that teaches it and start going to classes. And I just can't get enough of, let me learn as much as I can about meditation. What are the uh, other techniques? And I, I have been through a lot of different techniques and I always fall back on the same very simple technique that I do every day. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But part of the reason to begin to quiet your mind through meditation is it gives the body and the brain time where you're not jumping through hoops. Yeah. You don't have the hamster in the hamster wheel going 
going, 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 because the body and the mind get run down yeah. because that's the way we live our lives. We just don't stop. And when you stop and you just breathe and yeah. you get present, uh, your body starts to thank you because yeah. what I've learned uh, having various illnesses in my life and, and having issues with adrenal glands and all kinds of stuff and that, that I'm healing now, but have been issues because I had all this stress. And regardless of, of what I did in the past, I realized that when you are in resistance mode, which a lot of us are as attorneys, you're, you're not allowing the energy of the stress because everything in this universe is energy and information. Yeah. And if, if it's, everything is energy then uh, if you're pushing stuff down and you're, you're not wanting to let it go ex and really experience it, what it is what it is, then it's got to go somewhere yeah. it's, and it gets stuck inside the body. That's right. And um, it was coming out in me and migraine headaches once a month and it was debilitating. And yeah. so after I started meditating that those migraines went away and, and, um, and I just started to live a more balanced life. But here, is one of the biggest reasons that I began to meditate. And one of the, the, the things that really changed my life as a meditator, when you get in a meditative state and you, you get past the, I can't quiet my mind and my thoughts are all over the place and, and all I do is have thoughts, when you can get past that, which doesn't take that long if you can just do it, <laughs> it yeah. becomes a habit, right, Casey? It becomes a habit. Um, you become more in the moment yeah. because if you're not thinking and you're shutting that part of your brain off and your mind uh, and you become more present, that's really our natural state. We yeah. don't live in that state because uh, when you pop out as a kid, your parents don't do this. A lot yeah. of, a lot of your parents don't do them. Maybe some people's parents do this. And if you had parents that were meditators and you do it and you, man, I'd love to hear from you. We yeah. maybe want to interview you, but yeah. um, but as you start to become present, you start to let go of the ego mind, the fearful bullshit that comes up yeah. in your mind over and over and over. And, and one of the things I realized, I, I read this book by Eckhart Tolle back in the day when The Power of Now is called, first came out. And he was talking about being present and the benefits of it and, and listening to your thoughts. And he said, take time and just listen to what you say to yourself. That's right. Holy crap, man. I, I, I became aware that I was talking to myself. We all do it. You know, if you go to a psychologist and say, I hear voices in my head, may not be a good thing to say, but right. you do. You hear your own voice in your head. A lot of us will hear um, the, the ego mind talking to us. And it says stuff that you would not let anybody ever say to you oh, that's right <laughs> so that's right. no we're really bad to ourselves the the oh, words that we say it's horrible it's horrible it's sad really yeah. it's it's really sad based on when you hear it hear what you're saying it's like i, I just i don't want to do this to myself yeah. anymore and so as you become present you can learn how to become present by meditating and that's really my that was my gateway into the present moment and then of course i found these books by eckhart tolle and, and there's another amazing book called The Presence Process uh, by Michael Brown. Mm -hmm. You want to know how to be more present, that guy walks you through techniques. It is a very in-depth book, and I've read it multiple times. It's a very powerful book that will help you to become more present and be in the present moment. But there's a lot of reasons to meditate, and one of them for me was just to stop that, uh, that hamster in the wheel yeah. that continued to run until I said, enough is enough. I want to start to learn how to do this. And the biggest obstacle was overcoming the jitteriness, you know, the needing to be do something, do, needing, needing to be doing something, watching TV on the internet. You know, our mind just wants to be entertained all yeah. the time. And that, is, that was the biggest difficulty I had in just letting that go. But it really is a practice. Yeah. It's a practice. You know, one thing that you and I have talked a lot about is this definition of productivity and definition of getting stuff done, which leads to our definition of self-worth. If, if we're productive, if we've gotten something done, we feel good about ourselves. And I have found that when I meditate, when I just, and really all that means is focusing on my breath, closing my eyes, shutting things out, getting in the zone like many top yeah. athletes do. 
I found that I'm ironically more productive. Mm -hmm. I'm more creative. And so unfortunately, many of us confuse productivity with the wrong type of metrics, meaning, well, I've been out of town on business trips or I wrote enough uh, emails or I made phone calls or whatever. When really within all of us, there is a creativity. There is whether you're writing a book, whether you're writing a brief, whether you're thinking of new arguments, whether you're doing marketing to get clients in, yeah. whatever it is. And unfortunately, the, the, how we measure productivity doesn't really lead to that creativity and taking it to the next level. It's more of like, well, I got six emails out and I, I got kind of the base level stuff done. And we think that when the base thing I had was we think when we take the time to meditate, we're wasting time. Mm. I don't have time for it. I have to respond to all these emails. And really the point is how can you not meditate? How can you not do it? Because I have felt like I'm writing this thing for leave law behind. Um, I've been just kind of struggling with it, procrastinating. And just two days ago, I just took the time, meditated, got my word document out and all these ideas started flowing out and I've never written this way before. And so I would just, Really, the why for me is that ironically, I'm more productive, I'm more creative, and I'm doing my job better. Yeah, yeah, because that's a, a natural offshoot of what happens when you quiet your mind and you let your body relax and you're not tensed up. Because I have been tensed up a lot in my life. Just yeah. and being a lawyer was not a good thing for yeah. me, especially for the first ten years. But just giving your whole self a chance to relax, and when you let your mind rest. And you quiet the mind. That's it, right. It's like a portal that happens. Yeah. And we've talked about this person, really, you know, one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. It's like a portal that opens up and the creativity flows. And that's one of the things I really want to help lawyers to align with is the creative side of that's your right. brain, which is the right side of your brain. A lot of us, and I, I got to say I was one of them, left brain analytical. <laughs> now we aren't scientists, but it's the left brain analytical that really yeah. drives the, you know, the legal processes and all that stuff, checklists and laws. And that's analytical stuff. A lot of it's yeah. not very creative. And so thank goodness I found meditation because without it, I would have never had the ability to even write a book. I was never a writer. Now I am. And it is because I tapped into that energy of the creativity that wasn't there before. Yeah. And little by little, when you give your brain some time to relax, you'll find a big difference occurring in your work, your productivity, and really productivity. You know, we've talked a little bit about this before, and we're going to delve into this a lot more. But productivity is not working uh, in your business. It's working yeah, on your business. That's it's, right. it's the ideas. It's the, it's, the, it's the currency that ideas bring you through your ability to connect with people and market and, and different yeah. stuff like that and, and not so much advertise with attorneys. I don't like the billboard stuff as, as I don't, I know you but, don't, but. Um, you know, everyone, Adam has a practice. He's working with clients now to help them refresh their practice, grow their practice, market it. A um, lot of strategies, a lot of tactics. And I can tell you right now, he starts with this uh, idea around meditation, um, idea around going inward, getting in the zone. And I know he's told me, I mean, some are like, hmm, what? But, you, you know, the most successful clients in Adam's practice, they get this. They, they, and I see this in Leave It All Behind where people say, tell me, Casey, what job am I going to get outside mm -hmm. the law? And you can't start there. And I think the same thing with Adam, you know, is they'll say, great, how do I get a, a million clients coming in the door? And Adam says, hold on. We got, let's look inward first. It starts with us. Um, if you are open to this, email Adam. Uh, he's doing it successfully with so many people here. What we're talking about on this podcast now, we're going to get into the how before we end. But what we're talking about in this podcast here, and I just want to stress this with everyone, Adam is doing this with his clients now. Like this is not theory. This yeah. is actual real life stuff. And uh, I just love it. It's helped me with Leave Law Behind. I know you're helping people with their practice right now. And uh, it's just great stuff. It's just, it, 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 it works. Um, and it's counterintuitive to look inward in order to market outward, but That's it right. makes total sense once you're doing it. It does. Because one of the things that meditation will bring you as you get more present is your ability to consciously consciously direct your thoughts yeah there is so much power there in in having awareness of what you choose to think that right. for me was was like a mind bending uh, i uh, thought because i was literally my my thoughts were just coming 
like waves of the, you know, sitting at, at the beach, waves on the ocean. The thoughts were just coming, 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 never stopping. And then I started to listen to them. Yeah. And then I was aware of them. And then you become able to direct your thoughts where yeah. you want them to go. There is so much power there. I can't even tell you. And that's, it's part of one of the reasons why I wanted to do Esquire Academy, aside from the marketing and how to run yeah. a law firm and how to be in business, how to create raving fans. There's this whole other part of us where, you know, the stuff I teach, they don't teach you in law school. No. This is real world stuff. But the other stuff I teach on how to have life balance and meditate and be present and direct your thoughts and attention to what you want and intention and visualization. You know, it may sound touchy feely, but it's the missing link in all of us to have the kind of life that we really want. We want life balance. We and crave know, life balance. And it's something along just to give people reality and, and I'm jumping if I miss something, but it's like, I want a law practice that I help people. I want ideal clients who appreciate me. I want clients who, who, who will pay me because they know they're getting great value. I want to work four days a week and I want to be able to pick up my kids in the afternoon. Yeah. I want to not work. Duh, I want people who work for me, who love coming in the office. Yeah. I want and on like people, I know listeners are going, well, yeah, I'd love that. And you know, when you just think these thoughts and keep thinking it, I heard a quote which said, don't think about your fears. Think about what you want. I'm kind That's of butchering right. it, but that was the point. And, uh, you know, so I want to give everyone kind of some real life examples of what, what we're talking about. Like yeah. think about your ideal client. Well, and that's it. If you, if you don't have an opportunity to have somewhat of a quiet mind, it's going to be so caught up in fear-based thoughts that yeah. you'll never open up to who do you want as an ideal client? How much money do you want to make? The idea is to help you move towards making more money, working less, all of the stuff that I lived as a lawyer for 20 years now. And, yeah. and it's like, if I wouldn't have had this stuff come in my life, I, I probably would have gotten out of the law. And I was thinking about getting a law out of the law multiple times just because I really wasn't happy. I was working too much. I didn't have very good clients and all of those impetus, impetuses yeah. for change, I listened to them. Yeah. I heeded them. And then of course the right people, places and things and books came to me at the time to help me to realize there was something broader, broader in life that if I would have yeah. closed off to it, it would have never opened itself up. And so one of the things that I uh, applaud people for doing is, is even uh, thinking about meditating and, yeah. and then starting to do it. And we're going to have uh, Gina Cho, who wrote the, um, the Anxious Lawyer is the name yeah. of the book. And we'll put the, the link down. I've read it. It's like a uh, three-day meditation class in a book just for lawyers. You know, I teach uh, limited amounts of stuff on meditation in my work, but just get into it. And yeah. Let's talk about how you can start to meditate. And yeah. if you want, a few and, minutes you, left, give, give yeah. some, let's talk about some tactics. What are some steps attorneys can take right now from their, their living room, from a park bench, whatever it is? What can they do right now to, uh, to really quiet their mind? Well, the, the starting place is to get someplace quiet. <laughs> you know, if you're in your living room or your family room and the TV's on and your kids are running around or your spouse is making noise, it doesn't help you to quiet your mind because there's, those are distractions. And so uh, I like to be outside in my backyard and the birds singing and the quiet, um, or I go into, I, I always had some kind of a meditation spare room where, uh, you know, there's a bed or a chair in there where you can close the door and where it starts for anybody really looking to get involved in, in a daily meditation routine, because you really want it to become a habit. It's training. Yeah your mind to quiet down. And it's it, all it is for me, and this is what I still do, uh, no matter how many things I've learned about meditation, this is the easiest and it's the most succinct. And the best way I know, regardless, is be, just to sit and follow your breath in and out. Yeah. Follow your breath in and out. And there's some other things I add to that, but I've been meditating for upwards of 15 years now. And so, you know, uh, I can do it. I can quiet my mind very easily. <clears throat> but a lot of times I take five minutes out of the day. If I'm feeling like I'm pushing and there's, yeah, the energy is just not where I want it to be, where it's like, oh, I, I'm overwhelmed. 
I take five minutes and I just sit quietly and focus on my breath in and out. You just, when, def- I've learned my mind races. When I focus on my breath, I can't think of anything else. That's and right. And that's exactly do, the key. That's the key. And when I do think of something else, I go back to the breath and push that thought out of my mind. And that's what, for me has been, once I realized why I'm focusing on my breath, because when I think about my breath, I can't think about anything else. It started to click for me. Focusing on your breath is an easy way to get in the present moment. So if you find yourself crazed at any point in the day, you don't need to be in a closed room or laying down or in a lotus yeah. position. You, you just focus on your breath. You can be driving and doing that, paying attention to the driving, but being present. And it's the easiest way to get present yeah. because you're taking your thoughts out of your head where these thoughts, they, you know, they, they pass by like a stream, like a river. Yeah. You're sitting by your thought. You can let them pass by. And then bring yourself back into a centered state of focusing on your breath. And one of the things that I can tell you, all of you, not just you, Casey, (laughs) but I can tell you, don't get irritated if you lose focus on your breath. If the thoughts come back up, don't get irritated by that. That's the easiest way to get pissed off and stop meditating is to get irritated that you're not, don't judge the fact that you're not focusing on your breath it, it's, it's such okay a point. it's such a great point I, you, you're there you focus your breath you're saying okay i'm doing this and then all of a sudden you think about that thing at work or, yeah. or think about your wife or spouse or your kids or whatever or or the ball game and you go ah just cancel it out that's right go back to your breath that's all it is don't judge it just relax let it go let it pass by let it pass by because we can choose to grab on, hook on to a, a thought, and we don't let it go. And then it ramps us up. It pisses us off. The fear-based thoughts come in about that, and we can just get taken away yeah. uh, by those thoughts. But the key here is to just train yourself, because this is like anything. It's like it exercising is. a muscle. It's it just training yourself to be more present and be connected That's to right. a sensation in your body, which is your breath. It's the easiest thing. And if you can start there, uh, you know, the experts say if you do something for two weeks or four weeks or six, I don't know what the number is because there's all kinds of experts that say different numbers. But for me, you know, it's usually a month, a month or uh, a month and a half. If I do something regularly, it becomes a habit. And if it becomes a habit, you're going to start to remember to do it more often. What I started doing back when was I would just put a reminder uh, in my, uh, I don't know what it was, maybe a Palm Pilot back in the day. Oh, geez, that's dating me a little bit, Casey. But yeah. uh, I would put like a little reminder or I would set an alarm um, for 8 p.m. every night. And yes, you can bypass your TV shows yeah. <laughs> to do this. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, in times of heavy stress, I was meditating for an hour a day because it was just so much in me. You can feel it, the yeah. tension, your neck, your chest, your, your back, wherever you hold it. And I would just meditate until that released and yeah. it was gone. And I also use exercise to do that in heavy times of stress. But I don't have heavy times of stress anymore. Yeah. And the nice thing is 10, 15 minutes of meditation. And when you start to learn more about uh, connecting meditation, present moment, and then intention, and creating your intentions every day and, and focusing on what you want yeah. to move towards, wow, there's real power in, in that 15, 20, 30 minutes, depending on how long you want to take to do this. Uh, it, will, it, it will and it can change your life if you implement it as a habit. That's right. And so there'll That's be right. more on this. We're going to interview some people and we'll bring Gina <laughs> Cho on uh, and we're going to talk more about this because it is such an important part of how my life changed and That's it's right. changing Casey's life. And it's changing a lot of people in general's lives. And it attorneys is. are embracing it. You see articles all the time on is what's meditation? Is, should right. I do it? All that stuff. So the key is to just begin the practice of it because it is a practice. You know, a friend of mine, we're going to uh, – this has been great. A friend of mine was said you'd, um, he has like two or three glasses of wine a night, and, and I don't. I hydrate at night. I mean, I love a, a glass here or there. Um, and he's like, how do you not relax at night with the kids, with work, with everything, without a glass of wine? And I said, uh, you know, for me, it's that kind of dulls me and so on. I, for me, it was 
just kind of dr drinking my water, getting in the zone with my family. But a lot of what I look forward to isn't a glass of wine necessarily or a TV show or anything like that to relax, but it's that quiet time. Yes. That quiet time, 10 o'clock, 10, 15, the kids are asleep and I'm just, I'm just zoning. I, I look yeah. forward to it now. It's become even more part of a habit. So, um, well, I implore everybody listening to this to try it and do it. Yeah. And if you need more help, there's books, there's resources. Check out the section of my book, Raising the Bar, about this. It'll help you to understand it a little bit more deeply. Check out Gene of Cho's book. Whatever you can do, yeah. there's teachers, there's workshops, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to learn more about this. But just start to do it. Exactly everyone, what we talked about. Thank you, everyone. Why should you meditate? It quiets your brain. It gets you in the zone. It actually makes you more productive and is healthy and less stressful, reduces the stress. How to do it, you heard what Adam said, quiet room, focus on your breath, thoughts will come in, don't get mad at yourself, just push them back out, and fo even if it's 30 seconds, just start, just start. That's it. So, Very Adam, true. Adam, thank you, anything I missed? No, that's it, uh, we've covered everything we wanted to on this one, and uh, in the next episode, we are going to talk uh, about key number five, which is using technology to automate your practice as much as you possibly can and just using technology in general to help you to be more productive, get more done, and to literally automate the stuff that you do once, twice, three times or more every day so that you can have more free time and uh, you can meditate more. And that's the thing. Technology. Oh my God, technology. Uh-uh. It's there to let you meditate. It's there to, to run things for you that's so right. you get more free time so you can relax. Everyone, thank you so much for being here on part four of the seven keys. We're coming back with part five in the next episode casey berman adam alette from love or leave the law podcast please email us contact us questions comments whatever we are so happy to have you as part of the community and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode thanks That's it. thank you